Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Through the Pages. I am delighted to bring you a classic today. Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates. Prior to reading this book, I've probably seen that movie five times. So, like, I just love it. And I'm so glad I read the book. For It was one of those things that I was like, because I've seen the movie, would it make sense to read the book? And, oh my heavens, there's, there's a lot more in this. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean that there's a lot other, like, plot things. Like, there's not, like, storylines that didn't happen in the movie and stuff. It's just that everything is taken deeper, and it's that kind of simple deepness that the book, or that the movie shows that the book really expands on. And so, this was written in sort of like the age of anxiety, the... 61 is when this was published, but written about life in 55, um, where people are kind of like really just wanting things to be simple and regulated and like move into the suburbs, like, oh, good, just normal. Like, and it kind of seemed like what people w wanted, and then they, I think, realized like maybe this is devoid of meaning, and he really really dove into that in this and so I I found a lot of parallels in myself with the main character Frank Wheeler um also some in in, in Shep but um so Frank Frank Wheeler and basically had aspirations of of moving to Paris said it was the, the only real city that with all those sorts of things and it focuses around him and his wife who basically moved to the suburbs he has it all in his head through it and the book does a, a better job of explaining this in the movie that it's like a joke like we'll move out to the suburbs like yeah we'll get a house in the suburbs among all these people are like but the joke is that like we know we're not into this and you keep doing it and you stay for the, at that job a couple more years you get friends with the people that are out there but you say like but we're not suburb people like we're just out like it's a gag and like start to realize like we've built this life around this this thing that we're different and all of our actions point to us being the exact same aside from us talking about Paris and stuff which I sadly feel especially pandemic everything kind of changed my trajectories but um, it really was was heartbreaking and just the, I guess it, to me what was heartbreaking is how lonely a person in a relationship can be. And as someone who's been single for a while now, it seems like relationships are the solution to loneliness. But sometimes they're, they solidify it. And I think we go for these paths towards security, but they're false. And, and that is the deeper, like, oh, shit. Well, then what? You know, like, so it, it's, it's just like, like a staggering book. And it's not to say that it's depressing. It's, it's very engrossing. Um, it was received with praise when it came out. Kurt Vonnegut, one of my favorite writers, had a, a pretty heavyweight comment to say on it where he said, it's the, the great Gatsby of my time. It is one of the best books written by a member of my generation. That's pretty steep. The, in the same year this came out, Catch-22 came out. Like, there, there were so many classics being put out at this time. And this book holds up. Richard Yates wasn't, <clears throat> excuse me, wasn't necessarily getting all of the, the love and adoration that his, his work and him d deserved. But afterwards, things really stood the test of time. Revolutionary Road stands the test of time. Um, you can say it's about the 50s, and we're, it's, everything applies. Everything still applies these days. It's, it's, we're still heading towards the same trajectories, and even more so in the current times. Um, what, one thing that I really liked on the book, relative, and not to say relative to the movie, but like, that I just really liked in the book that couldn't be accomplished in the movie was the expansion of the 
their friend Shep. That character had a pretty big role in this. Not so much like in the plot per se more than what we saw in the movie, but there was more depth to him. And then there were scenes in the movie that kind of show that, you know, he's thinking more, that there's more going on. But in the book, it really gives gives you understanding of what's going on there. You know, just like how a, a, a scene would be narrated, that, you know, he's standing out thinking of this and, and longing and, and all this, where if you have a shot of someone standing out looking, like, you're not going to be ham-fisted about and say, and Chef's thinking about, like, it's, you have to assume and they're, it's nice to have seen the movie and had my own assumptions and understanding of it and then have this a little more clear cut. Like, this is what Richard Yates was thinking at that time, too. So, personal interpretation plus concrete really just furthered my appreciation of this story. And I think that's the main reason I go to novels and movies is the stories. There's a man who... Um, was just always a great family friend of ours who people would just describe him as a great storyteller. And like that, I probably referenced on here, is, just, is always stuck with me. Um, sadly, he passed of COVID a few months ago, but I always think of Tom, Tom Burek as a great storyteller. And so I look for good stories, whether that's in any form. But this is a story, that Revolutionary Road story, that I knew I was going back to the movie a lot, and it was like a couple months ago, I was like, I kind of like to watch that movie, and it's like, why don't I read the book? Like, you know, instead of watching the movie a fucking six time, like, you know, like, it's it's so good, though. Like, it, it, both of them are so good, and it's something where I think male, female, like, split, everyone would like this. It's so universal. Um, this was, I would say, his masterpiece. Um, I think it was Tennessee Williams had a really good quote that I saw where it was essentially, it was it was a long quote, but the tail end of it was essentially, like, if this is not a modern, if this is missing something that would have made it a modern masterpiece, I certainly don't know what that is. Like, that, this is a 10 out of 10. Like, if there's some other thing you need to do, like, I don't know, that's BS. Like, this, this, is, this is a phenomenal book. I haven't read, a, like, a classic in a long time. I think I, one of the first, maybe the first book I read 2020 was an Agatha Christie novel. But just because it's old doesn't mean it's a classic, if you know what I mean. Like... That it was it was okay and stuff, but um, she Agatha's had a lot of at bats. They're not all home runs, I'll say. But um, this this really was like triumphant. Um, this it reminded me of like the Bell Jar in that sense, where it's like wow, that is like a a, a part of history, and and that's it goes back to the old quote of books are humanity in print, and this this really is a an imprint of humanity, past, present, and probably future too. So. I will probably be reading more Richard Yates. If you've read any Richard Yates, send me those suggestions, please. I I need some guidance. Seems like he's got a fair amount of writing out there. Um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you enjoyed this little little three video marathon. Just knocked out blind spot and then a left. Um, thank you for rocking with this channel. I really really enjoy doing this. Um, thank you for thank you for watching the videos.